Hello, welcome to the Repair Specialist and in this video I shall be going through common causes of chainsaw engine damage. I can't cover all the reasons because that would be vast. I'm just covering according to my personal experience. So if you continue watching this video you'll learn what's going wrong, what to avoid, how to save some money and you might learn a few things about how a chainsaw works. Let's begin. And my personal number one reason for chainsaw engine damage is the fuel to oil mix. Because as we know the vast majority of chainsaws out there of course have two stroke engines and so it really is vital that we get this constitution right we need to use a really good quality premium oil I like to use it out of bottles like this I find it saves time there's a little gauge at the top there like a little tank and it helps us mix this oil with the fuel to the right constitution if you do want to find a good premium oil with this kind of bottle then I've included a link below in the description and so now let's take a look at why the fuel to oil constitution has to be correct let's take a look at the actual engine inside the chainsaw itself and so here we have our engine and fuel tank isolated there and so we know then that when this engine starts to work and the piston starts to travel up and down the cylinder there's obviously two metal surfaces there rubbing against each other and so of course we need some lubrication to stop any seizing of those components together and as we know that lubrication comes in the form of the two-stroke oil in the fuel so as the engine begins to run and fuel is drawn through the carburetor and into the engine there and used obviously it then lubricates the engine so observing the two stroke running like this then with the piston lowering and then raising we can see that there is always some fuel touching some of the components of that engine even though the fuel is used for combustion it's always touching those components as it's traveling through the engine and with a sufficient amount of good quality oil and fuel like this everything should keep running well okay so now we can see what happens in there let's imagine we've got a sufficient amount of fuel coming into the engine but we didn't mix it to the right constitution there's too little oil in with the fuel as that piston moves up and down in the cylinder that will ultimately result in what we call scoring of the piston and the barrel if we take a look here at an actual piston we can see we've got a normal one here this side and then on this side here we've got a scored piston we can clearly see those very damaging score lines there from top to bottom of the piston we can see clearly that the piston rings have also been damaged they've been worn away there so there's no way that this piston would be able to create any compression in order to run a machine and if it did run there's no way that it would run very well whatsoever However, this is severely damaged and this kind of damage doesn't just occur on the piston and the barrel as a result of low oil it also occurs anywhere where there's metal working on metal so we've got the big end bearings here and of course we've got the main bearings as well let's now have a look at how we can prolong the life of the engine so we can have the chainsaw working well for many more years handling the chainsaw well and regular services basically respecting it are all part and parcel of keeping a chainsaw for many many years working well basically with my own experience in the trade I found that if if a chainsaw requires a 50 to 1 mix then I always make it slightly stronger so I'll go as much as 45 to 1 even 40 to 1 of course some brands of chainsaw do recommend this strength of oil to fuel mix but it's a case of looking at the type of chainsaw what's recommended for it and do it slightly stronger for that particular chainsaw and doing so is going to see much less of this kind of problem with engines and particularly general wear of course an issue for some people is that because there's more oil inside the fuel then there's more oil being burnt there may well be a little more exhaust smoke experienced and also more carbon building up on the spark plugs but to me that's a very good exchange weighing up the cost of a few more spark plugs per year compared to the rebuild or the replacement of an engine and I've found over the years that just increasing the concentrations by this small amount doesn't actually carbon the whole engine up so the big problems there it normally just does the spark plug and there's a little more smoke now my number two reason is fuel too lean we normally hear people referring to carburetor settings as being either too lean or too rich they come sort of as opposite poles so let's imagine a good scenario here we've got an optimal amount of fuel coming out of the carburetor and into the engine and that's mixed with a good constitution of premium quality oil as we know all of those moving components will be well lubricated and this engine will fare well over time and so in a nutshell all that's meant by the fueling being too rich is that there's too much fuel coming out of the carburetor into the engine than what the engine actually needs and at the same time there'll be more smoke produced because of it so if too much fuel in here is what it means to be too rich then obviously too little fuel is what it means to be too lean so in this situation even though we've got a good quality fuel and a good quality premium oil if there's too little fuel coming in then there's going to be too little oil what I'm talking about here is if there's just slightly too little fuel coming through allowing the engine revs to raise because that's what happens when engines are running a little too lean it actually causes over revving of the engine it's a slight offset of that happy medium midway point so 
I'm not actually talking about going too far with this and actually causing fuel starvation because of course that wouldn't allow the engine to run. We kind of need a happy medium midway point between rich and lean and so too lean means overworking of the components and less lubrication there from the oil to support the overworking of those components and so that is going to result in engine damage and the kind of damage is the same it's the scoring of the piston and the barrel it's the season of the big end bearings and the main bearings and so now we understand that let's move on and look at some of the common causes for this type of lean fueling well one common cause can be the fuel filter I'm not talking about the fuel filter being totally blocked because again that would stop the engine from running but when it's partially blocked it only allows a partial amount of fuel of course down through the fuel lines through the carburetor and out into the engine so if the fuel filter has been isolated as being the problem the simple thing is to replace it so moving on now to a much more common cause of lean running and that is incorrectly set mixture screws the tuning screws on the carburetor so the main jet here supplies the bulk of the fuel for the engine and these areas here provide a smaller but more precisely measured amount of fuel and this measured amount of fuel can be adjusted by the operator by turning each of these screws if we turn them anti-clockwise they screw out and allow more fuel up and if we turn them clockwise they screw in and allow less fuel up if we were to unscrew these screws too far anti-clockwise then we'd create a situation of being too rich inside the engine and in the opposite way if we were to screw them in too far then it would create a situation of being too lean again I'm not talking about screwing these screws either out or in way too far where it either produces too much fuel and the engine stops or too little fuel that the engine stops I'm talking about going just under or above that happy medium of fuel supply here and so when these adjustment screws are incorrectly set to too lean allowing too little fuel into the engine and of course with it too little oil then we're going to see this kind of damage over time if you do need to adjust these screws and tune your carburetor optimally I do have a video here on YouTube showing you how to do that and I'll leave a link so you can check that out okay so now we'll move on and look at another quite common cause what can sometimes happen is we get holes occurring here in the inlet boot or the inlet manifold as some might call it. Generally these inlet boots are made of a type of rubbery material and they can become damaged over time allowing leakage and because the engines creating a suction inside of there it draws in air from these little damaged holes and that air now mixes with the air and fuel it reduced the vacuum inside the inlet here that was produced by the engine and of course that meant then there was less vacuum to draw out the right amount of fuel out of the main jet and that created a situation where there was less fuel and more air going into the engine and now we could say this is lean fueling and situations very much the same as this can occur by the carburetor being too loose and in that case there we're going to get leakage in the, any of the joints between the carburetor and the boot and the boot and the engine and this again is going to create over revving of the engine and then there'll be too little lubrication in there and that means we're going to get damage in the barrel and piston in the big end bearings and the main bearings again and so in that case we might just need to tighten up the carburetor and all may be well but generally if there is any damage on that boot we need to replace the boot because it can't be repaired in my opinion it'll always leak if there is a hole there we'll move on now to another cause of lean fueling and it's actually to do with the barrel not the actual barrel itself it's the gasket at the bottom because at this point the barrel can separate from the rest of the engine as most of us know and so of course the cylinder is bolted onto the crankcase then but it's vital that there remains an airtight seal there between the two because of the pressures generated inside the crankcase here even if there's a very slight gap there between between the barrel and the crankcase there's going to be air being drawn in there and so as the engine runs now and air continues to enter into the crankcase mixing with that air and fuel mixture that was correct for normal engine running we've now got a state of lean fueling so leakage like this at this point could be just a case of the fact that the barrel bolts are loose and they just need tightening up to the correct settings otherwise it could be that a new barrel gaskets required in the past I've roughly pinpointed this problem by taking a look at this area here between the crankcase and the barrel and if there's a lot of oil around that area it can sometimes mean that there's a leakage there of the barrel gasket and just to clarify that's because as the piston raises there is a vacuum in there drawing in this air that we don't want but as the piston lowers there's a positive pressure so it would sort of blow out of that area and that of course is when it would blow out the fuel inside there and of course the fuel is mixed with oil the fuel would evaporate but the oil would still linger around the bottom of the barrel but having oil here doesn't always mean this problem and if there is oil there it's probably best to talk to a professional because they can then probably conduct a leakage test 
We can also get the same sort of lean fueling issue here, drawing in air if the crankcase has trauma to it and there's a hole there in the crankcase. Again, you need to talk to a professional to see if the cost of repairing this outweighs the cost of buying a new machine. But a more common reason in this area is the main seals leaking. I've had to replace many of these in the past due to this particular reason. I personally always insist on replacing the accompanying crankshaft bearings as well. And that's because any wear in the crank bearings whatsoever will make it so the new seals don't seal either. So in my opinion, it's always best to do the job right first time so we don't have to go back and do it a second time, wasting time and money. Okay, so my third and final reason now for chainsaw engine damage is contaminated fuel or dirt in the fuel. Imagining now then that we've got a great oil to fuel mix with a good premium oil, good quality fuel. If we've obviously got a situation where we've got crud and dirt resting at the bottom of the fuel tank, even if it's not always obviously visible, then it only takes a slight malfunctioning of some sort, some damage of the fuel filter here or it being missing and then we're going to get that crud going all the way through the fuel lines and through the carburetor and into the engine. And over time with little two-stroke engines like this as that crud goes through into the engine it has an abrasive effect on all them moving components acting like a sandpaper. It wears away slowly at the barrel and the piston creating the unwanted and unnecessary damage. There is another way that dirt and crud can get into the engine other than it being through the fuel. So the air that's drawn in by the engine. And so this final part emphasises the vital necessity of a decent quality air filter and the maintenance of that air filter. And so again it's equally as vital that the air has to be crystal clean. No debris inside that air whatsoever. Because in a scenario where the air filter is either damaged or it's insufficient or it's missing there's going to be contamination inside the air. And that contamination over time does the same thing as what I was talking about with the fuel. It results in that unnecessary and unwanted money wasting engine damage. Those last two points really emphasise the need for thorough and regular servicing of a chainsaw. Replace the air filter and the fuel filter and things like that at least and the fuel and cleaning out the fuel tank yourself rather than leave it and then it develops into a money wasting problem. Of course if you don't feel confident undertaking any of the work yourself then it's always best to see a professional. And I'd like to personally thank you for watching this whole video through to the end and if you do want to watch the full version of this video then the link should be just here at the side. Please also have a look down at the description the information I've got down there for you and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.